So basically what you have is you have <coughs> these two pulleys and this pulley supports a platform where you have a man sitting with the weight as 150 pounds and then the weight of the platform by itself is 10 pounds. Then you have <coughs> the ropes, so the rope goes from point A, goes all the way across this pulley, comes around, then goes around this pulley, and finally gets attached at this point. So that's one continuous rope, which is going from here, going around this, and coming, coming around here, and stopping at this point. You got another rope, it starts from this pulley, it goes around this, goes over this pulley, comes down, attaches itself at this point. So what we need to do is to find the force at this point and we need to find the reaction at this plank. So <coughs> first thing we need to make assumptions and we're going to assume that all the pulleys are frictionless or pulleys are frictionless means there is no friction between the pulleys and the rope as well as there is no friction at the support where the pulleys are being supported there is no friction at that point now, with that assumption that there is no force of friction between pulleys and the rope and at the support of the pulley, then the tension on this side of the rope will be identical to the tension on the other side of the rope. So, this rope which goes here, goes around here, it stops here, it will have same tension. Any part if I isolate from here should have exact identical tension. That means if I cut this part of it and draw a free body, then <coughs> you take that in tension and then the tension on both ends is going to be T and T. Same way if I take a small segment here, you should have exact same tension on both ends with the force as capital T. Same thing going to happen here, same thing going to happen here. All of these parts of the rope will have exact same tension T and it's going to be in tension. So, <coughs> it's not, I, mean I said the moment we made this assumption here, then it becomes possible to take every part of the rope and use the same force in that part of the rope. Now, <coughs> if I look at this pulley, that means the pulley at C. Then you have this point here when the rope is attached and since the rope itself has a force T, then it's going to exert an exact same force except it's going to be in opposite direction. Then if I look at this point, you have a rope coming in with end tensions at T. So this point should have a force with that exact same magnitude as T. Same thing on the other side, I mean if this is T, then there's going to be a tension and that's going to be T. So <coughs> then you got the bottom part and as I said before, the bottom part you're going around like this, coming back and we are attaching this on the same pulley, which means <coughs> that 
since the second rope is continuous, that means it should have the same tension. And for that part of the rope, again we take that in tension. Let's say if I take a force P. So this small segment which is taken out, let's say has a force P. Then the point is attached to the pulley should have the same force or it should be in opposite direction. So let's call this as P. So that pretty much gives you the forces, those are acting on the pulley at point C. Now if I look at, let's say, pulley <coughs> at point B. Now if I look at the pulley at point B, then again you got this point, this point, and this point. Now <coughs> we take the force P in here, then this point is attached to this point. So as a result, you should have a force. So this point is here. I mean, we took P in here. That's this point on the pulley. So this point here, you're going to place the force as P. So that's one point then it's the same rope going around and we said this part of the rope will have identical force as P. So you have a P and a P. So this point will also have exact same force and we're going to call this as P. <coughs> then it comes over the pulley